This is Digital Anarchist. Hey everyone, this is Alan Schimmel, and you're watching another segment on TechStrong TV. My guest for this segment is Philippe Umo. Philippe is the CEO of CrowdSec. And Philippe, welcome to TechStrong TV. Hello, I'm delighted to be with you. Delighted to have you here, Philippe. So, you know, this is the first time I believe that we're interviewing anyone from CrowdSec on, on TechStrong. So I think a good place to start is to introduce the company to our audience. So, Philippe, if you don't mind, give us a little background, maybe a little of your own background as well. Sure. Um, I decided to start this company like uh, five years ago, but it took time because I had lockups. I sold my previous company, so I had to stay for a while in Santa Cruz and couldn't recruit my old pals. But basically, I've been in a pen test background first. I did a lot of pen test red team, so a lot of uh, offensive security. And then I did a lot of defensive security on the other side. And trust me, it's way harder. Um, so what it is, it's like high security environments, but like 10 years ago, so it was kind of a new thing by then. And we sold the company because, you know, a lot of uh, French uh, managed services wanted to have this kind of high security cloud for their customers. So, and then I found, you know, we made just half the way. We could do... We could provide the same level of security, but without the hassles, right? Without the, all the complexity that we had to have in this company. And we could do it through a product. And that's how CrowdSec is born. Excellent. And, and you're right. You know, so my, my background security too, I spent 20 plus years. And, and uh, one of the companies I co-founded, about 60% of our business was the US uh, DOD. We did Navy, Marines, Army. Uh, installations and again high security a lot of certifications and information assurance kind of work that had to go on and you know I think back to what we were thinking and doing 10 15 years ago versus what's available today and of course it's, it's very very different environments right 15 years ago the DOD wasn't really using cloud uh, you know, the Army or the Navy and so forth. And we didn't have a lot, you know, the AppSec world wasn't what it is. Um, but when I hear the term CrowdSec, I'm thinking like crowdsourcing or, you know, that the, the, there's an element of that in it. Is is that part of the CrowdSec formula? Is, is crowdsourcing security? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's actually the core of it. That's why we chose the name. And I'm so delighted people like, you know, nail it and understand the, the sound in it. So the, the basic thinking we have behind is like, look, we've been spending millions, zillions of dollars in security, right? So if you take like super big banks that are spending hundreds, like a lot of hundreds of million dollars a year, they still get hacked. How come? I mean, that's crazy. This is one of the only field in the whole industry where no matter the amount of money you put, you can get beaten up. It's like if you would go to a racetrack with your brand new Lambo and you would get beaten up at the, the finish line by a Chevy pickup 67. It's just not possible, right? But this is the world of car. In the world of IT, the big budget doesn't make such a big difference because the game is totally asymmetrical. It's totally in favor of the offensive forces. And those guys are teaming together. They are sharing the information. They are structured. They are exchanging things together. And we said, OK, let's do the same thing. Let's gather all the DevOps, all the SecOps, all the sysadmins, and give them a tool that would be some sort of a ways, but for firewalls. And as soon as they get uh, aggressed, they would share the IP. So not only block the aggression, but share the IP that aggressed them with the, all the network. So we would all work together as a crowd against these offensive forces. Love it. I, I love it. And, you know, so Philippe, let me ask a silly, what some may consider a silly question. Why did it take for now for us to sort of use, apply sort of a crowdsourced, you know, model to, to security like this? Well, what we have now about like the threats is classical CTI, right? The classical CTI goes like this. People's own 100, 200, 300 machines on a couple of clouds running simulated services, which, which we call Honeypot, right? So they are like, attack me, attack me, attack me, and they simulate that there are VPN endpoints like 
terminal service endpoint, some by endpoint, HTTP services and stuff, right? And they listen to what's uh, incoming and they say, okay, this IP is nefarious, this IP is dangerous and so on. But this is limited com compared to what we're doing. What we're doing is like running real services because you know, this software is protecting real services, real VPN endpoint, real HTTP services and so on across all the internet, IPv4, IPv6, no matter the IP range, there are people using the product in Togo, in university, sweatshops in Thailand, individuals in Iceland uh, with fiber connection, 5G, 4G, whatever, you name it. It's impossible to pinpoint us on the map, right? And those are real services I told you. They are scattered all across the place and they are not gathered on just one range or whatever. So it's infinitely more powerful to have a cross-source information than a centrally gathered one. I mean, centrally by like 100, 200 machines. We already are thousands of users and we are targeting millions. We want to be the next gen fail to ban distributed across the whole network. So we really literally are aiming at million machines. But already if we are 10,000, 20,000, we have the best ever source of information uh, available. Uh, I love it, 100%. Now, Philippe, as we were talking off camera before we started, you know, our audience is, is some DevOps, some cyber, then some DevSecOps, you know, both, cloud native, people interested in digital transformation. If you can, I'm going to ask you to talk to our developer audience right now, our DevOps audience. How, how does this help them? How can they leverage this? How could they be involved? Sure. Well, the first step is using the software. So the software goes as follows. You go on GitHub, it's for free, forever. It's a mighty license. You really don't owe us anything, right? This software will help you protect your stack, whatever it is. It could be like HTTP, could be, uh, you know, whatever level and protocol you want. As long as your software are spitting logs, we can analyze those logs and apply the behavior engine on it. And the behavior engine will find patterns. Like if someone is failing five times, it's authentication on an FTP, maybe it's trying to guess my password. If someone is doing 0.1 transaction on our uh, website, where usually our web shop is selling like on average $30 cards, is someone trying to credit card stuff and validate credit card numbers. If someone is scanning a lot of closed ports, if someone is scanning a lot of URLs and stuff, all of these are behavior we can catch, and we already do, right? And then they can apply a remedy wherever they want. So they can detect at one point and remedy in another point, in another place, uh, you know, on the firewall, in their reverse proxy, directly in the apps, in their payment gateway, wherever they want. So once they did this, they can partake into the network naturally by sharing the IP they blocked. They don't have to. If they don't want to, they don't have to. They can de uh, you know, deactivate this feature. But if they want to partake into the network, then they get a second benefit from the network, the global IP reputation database working for them for free. They are sharing with us. They are making us strong. So we are giving them back all this power. And the monetization model is elsewhere. It's where the people don't want to don't want to share anything, right? And they are maybe willing to have extra features like uh, you know, uh, handling a lot of machines. Like today, somebody deployed maybe uh, 200 or 300 machines. They don't want to use it one by one. They want to have a, a global control tower of all of this to be able to, you know, turn on switch, adjust the policies and stuff, right? So this is the way they can already work with us. They have to know that we don't share the logs. If we don't capture the logs. Their logs are treated locally. The only thing we export, if they do want to, is behavior, IP and timestamp, that's all. This is the only thing we export. And then we can do the reputation magic, right? And if they want to go deeper into this and help the global community, they can bring their uh, knowledge at the, at the table because they are all developers. They are you know, very qualified people. So since it's open source, we are accepting a lot of contribution. It could be new scenarios you know, to detect some new behavior. It could be new parsers to uh, swallow some new logs that we don't know about yet. Could be a new type of bouncer that I don't know will like ring the CEO, uh, the CTO of the company on his phone instead of blocking the IP, whatever they want to do. And all of this will be integrated in the hub and distributed back to the community so they can partake into the development of the software. Excellent. You know, sitting here listening to you, Philippe, I'm thinking to myself, this was really like kind of the original premise behind threat research. 
right, is you, you did set up global honey pots and you did gather data from your honey pots. But what raid threat research at some of the bigger security vendors work was that they were able to anonymously, right, by anonymizing the data, they were able to use their hundreds or thousands of customers data, you know, to supplement the information they had in the honeypot to give a better, a better view, a better view of what were dangerous IPs, a better view of what, what packets, what apps, what EXE files were, were malicious, right? What email addresses and so forth. Now, the problem was, is that, you know, threat research was, was this company's threat research and that company's threat research. And we didn't see a lot of the pooling across security vendors. So, you know, what, as a, if you were a Fortune 100 or a Fortune 500 company, you, you oftentimes had to subscribe to multiple threat research feeds, threat intel feeds, to get a, a, a complete picture. And it, and it sounds almost like CrowdSec is overcoming that by, by being open like this. But more importantly as well is there's a proactive element to it that, you know, what you get back for uh, putting your anonymous in information into the machine is you proactively put in defense. You proactively, and then it, it's up to individual companies how proactive they want to be, right? Do I want to block all the IPs you're telling me about? Or do I want to just, you know, note them as bad and we'll keep our eye on them kind of thing. Um, so it seems like a very, you know, fair trade, right, of, of, of what you get for what you give. Absolutely. We have to be fair with the community because, you know, when a company like us doing open source, we will announce shortly, and that's kind of a scoop thing, uh, that we are doing a big fundraiser, right? So when uh, an open source company is doing a fundraiser, the first thing people are thinking, okay, they sold their uh, soul to the devil and uh, they're going to monetize everything. That's not true. That's not what we want to do. What we want to do is gather a lot of information, make the community benefit for, from it for free. But if you're a big bank and you cannot share a single thing or just don't want to, then you can leverage the, the database anyway. It's not a problem. It's fine by us. And what you said before about like, you know, those CTI company or maybe other antivirus, whatever, they didn't really naturally uh, share together. They were more competitors, right? And also right. they were treating a very specific thing. Like for example, I don't know, HTTP layer. Akamai is something internally, but it's internal knowledge and it's only on HTTP. Uh, maybe F-Secure has something, maybe McAfee has something and so on. And they are all within their room. So they share a bit, but it's harder for them because they are competitor in the end, right? But we think at CrowdSec, the only safe way is that DevOps, SecOps, sysadmins join hand together and say, okay, let's do it all together because all together we will outnumber the hackers. We'll outpower them by a one to thousand ratio. You use a new IP, we know about it. You have 3000 IPs, we know them all. And we'll be peeling the onion. And trust me, we won't be the one crying. Excellent. I, I don't disagree with you. Um, but, but let's also be real. It, this is a venture. How, how, do you, how can you monetize this? Or how are you planning on monetizing? Right? Because there's ways of monetizing without being a, you know, a vulture or, or anything like that. So how, how, you know, and if it's too early yet, it's fine. Just say it's too early. Oh, oh, well, no, it's super, it's super fine by me. And we're transparent about that. You know, we are real open source companies. You, everything you ask, we have to answer because it's a model, right? So the thing is, the monetization goes as well. Say we have many large customers looking at us, like, I mean, really, really large Q1, US-based cloud maker, right? Stuff like that. People like that. What they need is like a global centralized way of handling the security policies across thousand, if not tens of thousands of machines. They need to be to able to enforce specific stuff at specific time on their bouncers. Uh, and that is a premium feature, one of them. The second feature that you get for premium is AI, because 
in not so long from now, we'll be able to dig into our huge data lake that is growing by the day and see what we call weak signals. Weak signals is like IP, A, B, C, and D are aggressive, but they are just likely under uh, the level of noise where we would deem them as being really, really bad. So they are acting all together and each of them is doing part of the job, right? So since it's separated in small packages, it would be not offending enough to end up into the reputation database. But the AI will, will catch this pattern saying, oh, A, B, C, and D were at this place before. And in this place as well, more or less at the same time, with the same time frame or ratio, probably A, B, C, and D work together. So you know what, JP Morgan, Citibank, whomever, if you see A coming to your premises, directly block B, C, and D before they even come to you, right? Because they will come to you. We know about it. It's more about this uh, minority report thing, you know? Uh, the other feature we monetize is like telling you that you are attacking, right? We see your IPs attacking people around. So we'll tell you, you will probably compromise. You should look deeper into your system. We can tell you also if you are the only one being targeted by an attack and not anyone else, which would end up being a targeted attack, which is also a premium feature. And sure. um, and you get cool dashboard for your boss, you know, to present like, look what we folded as a tax this month. Maybe you can give us 50 bucks a month to get better dashboard, better reporting and stuff and support, mm -hmm. obviously. So that's pretty much what's inside. Got it. I love it. Philippe, we didn't tell people where, where to go on the web to find out and, and, and you know, partake and join this. What, what's the URL? Well, uh, crowdsec.net, C-R-O-W-D-S-E-C.net. And obviously on GitHub, we are crowdsecurity slash crowdsec. You can just Google in crowdsec. You will find us pretty much everywhere if, if the PR agency did the good job, right? <laughs> What's what you pay them for, right? Hey, they got you on the show here. Um, anyway, Philippe, we're about out of time. I want to thank you for joining us. I wish you the best of luck with CrowdSec. This is, you know, as a security person, I, 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 I like what I'm hearing. I, I like what I'm hearing. It's, it's a good thing. Come back and visit us again. Keep us posted, okay? Yes, it will be my pleasure. Excellent. Philippe Humo, uh CEO, CrowdSec. That's CrowdSec.net. Check it out. Sounds really great stuff here. This is Alan. We're going to take a quick break on Tech Strong TV, and we're going to be right back with our next guest. <laughs>